These are red crown cranes. Uh, they're also from Asia, uh, mainly Russia, China, and Japan. Loud as air horns, six feet tall and with wingspans up to eight feet long, these birds are also incredibly long-lived. Probably anywhere, you know, 40 to 60 in that range is, is typical. They're just one of several species of cranes at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute in Front Royal, Virginia. And this is a kind of center for troubled cranes. Some of them are injured and are being rehabilitated. Others are here for breeding purposes. But all of them are critically endangered in the wild. They're an endangered species because of habitat loss. There's 5,000 in the wild and declining. Both red-crowned cranes and their close cousin, the white-naped crane, live in the ever-diminishing wetlands of China, Mongolia, and eastern Russia. Um, the DMZ is one of the safest spots for them since no people are allowed in. It's like a winter refuge for cranes and other wildlife. That's amazing. Because they don't, they don't weigh enough to set off the landmines. It's wherever people aren't is where these are yeah. doing the best, right? Yep. So just don't go ahead of Chris or I, yeah. but you can come in with us. Because it could be politically and environmentally difficult to reintroduce these birds back to their native homes in Asia, these cranes here could help guarantee their species' long-term survival. And a unique problem is happening to this white nape crane. She doesn't recognize other cranes. She views me as her mate. Uh, is that normal? I mean, for a bird to imprint on a person like that? I mean, I guess all animals can do that, right? Yeah, it, it happens with birds. It's especially predominant in, in species like cranes. It happens when they're very young, if they're hand raised by people, if they're only exposed to people. And she still acts like a crane. She does crane behavior. She just doesn't recognize other cranes as her species. In fact, she's infamous for killing them. And she allegedly even killed other male cranes at other zoos when they tried to pair her. Because she's so rare and doesn't mate with others, Crow and Lynch use artificial insemination to get her to produce offspring. If I was here by myself, she'd actually be dancing and, and uh, soliciting me to mate with her, um, which made the AI, the artificial insemination, very easy because I was eventually able to go in and do it by myself because I, I take care of her and she's the most familiar with me. She's kind of in love with you, though. Yeah, yeah. Once she lays eggs, they're removed and given to surrogate parents to be raised. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Ribas.